What's up, Wayne Baron here with DarkFix.net, and we are once again inside of Microsoft Visual Studio 2010. And this is uh, lesson seven of our ASP.NET VB.NET uh, lessons. And this one right here is going to be uh, retrieving the data that we have inserted on lesson five into our database. We're going to retrieve that database from our SQL Server. And so let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, let's do a new website, an empty website, and now click here, and we're going to choose web form. Come down here and do a split, and we don't really need the form, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, now let's see. The first thing that we want to do is that we want to come about right up in here. Let's go ahead and do our open and closing brackets. And now we're going to type in the following information. Dim cn as system dot data dot SQL client dot SQL connection. Okay, and that right there we'll have in that part. Next thing that we want to type in is cn equals new system dot data dot SQL client dot SQL connection. And let's see, we're going to do data source equals oops let's get rid of that uh, double quote there and we're going to type in cars crisis backslash cars 2005 equals I'm at semicolon database equals my temp DB and then user ID equals SQL tester and then our password if we can spell it right is temp pass and then that will be it okay so we got our data source which is our server name our instance name our database name our ID or user ID and then our password. So now let's do cn dot open and let's go down to let's type in dim and it's gonna be string cs and then as string and let's see equals username. Okay. The reason why we're doing username is that uh, as long as this is what you typed in to your database, you should have a record that says username. Uh, either way, if you type in uh, the <clears throat> excuse me the username field of whatever record that you typed in, in our case, we've got either username or username two. And so, if we type in username two, then we will get the password two. Uh, as our resulting records back and so we're going to do that one right there then we're going to do dim get user as new system dot data dot sql client dot sql parameter and then whoa i totally jumped the gun on that one didn't I? let's go back it's not SQL parameter it's SQL command dot SQL command okay now let's do this okay now what we want to do is that we want to select username password and we can even grab a hold of our user ID from user TD where username at username 
C in. We got to add in our connection there at the end. Okay, so that right there has our select statement. We want to select our username, password, our user ID from our user table where username at username. So this right here is going to be this right here. So now let's go down and let's do get user and let's see dot parameters dot add and then we want to do new system dot data dot SQL client dot SQL parameter and then we do at username comma string CS yep and then that is going to close it then we come down here to dim RS user Let's change that again and then equals oops sorry as system dot data dot SQL client and hear me say dot every five seconds is really annoying and then we want that to be the end so then we come down and we type in RS user equals get user dot execute reader so we want to go and grab a hold of that one and then we do data command whoops I gotta get rid of that that's annoying okay. Let's come down dot command behavior there we go that's what we want and then yeah change that to a dot and we want to do close connection okay typing out all this code does get a little confusing and uh, yes just in case you did not catch on to it I am looking at another monitor if I was not then I would be totally lost right now so all right I'm learning just as you are so anyway uh, let's go down to the next one let's see if we can actually get rid of this error it's a system isonic result uh, let's see get user end execute yeah get rid of the end and it's get user dot execute reader and then data so let's come down here and type in something else and see if we can get rid of that uh, if rs user dot has rows then yeah everything's sort of messing up here while rs user dot read okay now we definitely got a problem here so I will be right back okay found the problem right here where it says SQL data data adapter whenever that little hint pops up like uh, this right here dot um, SQL I mean we can see it here but whenever that other like see this hint right here whenever that hint gets in our way it's hard to see it's actually supposed to be SQL data reader and then that right there gets rid of our error. So now let's take our uh, this information right here and we're going to bring that up to there and then we're going to have our closing. Okay, so now what we want to do is that we want to create our variables. So let's go ahead and do dim and get un as string equals rs user username okay so now let's copy this and paste it and do pw and change this to 
password. We can also come down here and do get ID and then change this to you ID. So now the only thing that we've got to do is we just got to choose these variables right here and add them to our code. So let's say uh, this is your username, this is your password, this is your ID. And so we would come here, get rid of that. And now we just type in get you in, get password, and then get ID. So uh, let's go ahead and add in a break for each one of these. And then let's save it. And come over here to debug, start debugging, click OK, and let's see what we get. And we've got a problem, an expression of non-boolean type specific in a context where a condition is expected near username at username. So let's go ahead and find out what's causing that problem. Okay, I figured it out. Right up here where it says username at username, we forgot our equal sign. So running our equal sign, let's go ahead and stop our debug. And let's go ahead and debug again, hitting the F5 key. And there we go, username cars pass and one now if we come over here and we change our to username number two and then we come over and reload our page we get the records from our second user so that is how we read records from sql server database within a vb.net application all right, Wayne Baron here with DarkFix.net. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Have a good one. Bye-bye.